Hey guys, Ivan here. So in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics, but we will start briefly with what happened at one Cooper Pro show in the end. As you guys probably heard, Ian Valier won the show, but it was very interesting. First of all, we had much better show than we anticipated. We had two Olympians, Ian Valier versus Anton Voyant. It was quite a battle, but it was very interesting that a lot of people in the comment section all over the internet basically had Antoine possibly winning and beating Ian Valier. But I think most people realize that Ian was gonna win this show. I mean, come on guys, Ian is a top 7 Olympian. Antoine, he's not on that level, not just yet, maybe someday. He definitely pushed Ian and he is the reason why this competition was an actual bodybuilding show. And it was actually a really good show, crowd went crazy about these guys. But as far as the winner of this show and why was this the outcome, why Ian Wallier won this show, well, I think it was pretty obvious. As far as Antoine, he had better calves, for sure. Also, Antoine had very good quads, he was kind of matching Ian in that department. But as far as the sheer mass, the thickness, the, 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 the density, the size, everything aside from calves and quads, Ian was killing Antoine. The thing is, we really have to be there, in person, to see what is the difference, muscularity and conditioning wise, but here is a photo that I found taken from backstage and here you can kind of get the idea of the size difference. And obviously the first thing that you will notice is Ian's glutes, that are like three times Antoine's glutes, but you know, Ian is really known for having incredibly large glutes and also very conditioned and everything like that, so he's really dominant in that part, but just overall size of the legs, lower body, Ian just out-muscled Antoine, but he also out-conditioned him too. Now the other thing is uh, upper body, back to chest thickness. Also, Ian was definitely much thicker, he had more muscle, as you can see right here. The photo was taken kind of from behind, so you can see the difference in their backs. So, if you guys also had Antoine winning, I hope this will clear things up for you. I think it was a pretty clear win for Ian. Unless you are just a hater, you don't like Ian's personality, which I understand, and that's why you wanted to see Antoine win. Antoine is very likable, he has so many fans, but physique-wise, let's be real, Ian was definitely better. For a big guy, and I mean really seriously big guy, 265 on stage, he had a great abdominal control, as you can see he was able to pull a vacuum at 265. This is really impressive and hopefully it's gonna be an example for other bodybuilders to learn how to control their midsections. Of course, not all of them have to do it a vacuum like Ian or like Hadi or some other guys, but at least learn how to control the midsection, which is something we see more and more often. Not always, unfortunately, but it's getting better for sure. And how, what is the way to learn how to control your stomach? It is by doing vacuums, and if you practice them enough, like Ian did, you will be able to pull a vacuum on stage, and it's definitely very entertaining, it's really impressive. Props to Ian for doing this. For the classic physique, this was probably even more clear, even more obvious, that uh, Chan Kang, Branch Chan, was going to win classic physique, as he did. He punched his ticket for the Mr. Olympia. We're gonna see him on Mr. Olympia stage. As you can see, this guy has a really classic look, really beautiful shape, that kind of plastic look, right? He has really nice skin, really nice looking muscle bellies, just, you know, very, very clean, very clean and nice look. The only thing that he can improve is conditioning. From the front you can't even see it because of his insane genetics, he just looks good, even when he is not super conditioned, but from the back you can see it in his glutes. He got away with it at Vancouver Pro, but is he gonna get away with it at Mr. Olympia? Not likely, not likely. He will beat a lot of guys, I mean there are like 50 guys in classic physique at the Mr. Olympia and he's not gonna be 50th if he has glutes like this. He's gonna be, I believe, in top 6, but if he wants to climb the ladder, if he wants to be like top 2, top 3, I don't really see him beating Chris Bumstead, most likely not even Terence Ruffin, probably not Ramon either. Fabian also looks really good this year, Urs is gonna be also really tough to beat, so, you know, cracking the top 5 at the Mr. Olympia is gonna be really tough, and if he wants to be up there, he needs to get this fixed, he needs to come in shredded, because everybody else is going to be peeled. Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is William Bonac and his new physique update. It's nothing crazy, nothing that you haven't seen before, it's just William in his usual off-season look, very lean, but he's 260. 
for his height, that is a lot, right? Uh, this conditioning, that is heavy, man, that's heavy. As you can see, he says he's 118.3 kilos and he was 105 on stage. Is he gonna have to lose another, uh, how many is that, 13, 14 kilos to get in shape? I don't think so. I think he's going to be 5 kilos heavier, which is like 10, 12 pounds. So I think this is gonna be the best William we're gonna see this year at the Mr. Olympia. The other thing I want to talk about uh, William Bonac that you saw in the thumbnail is his weird looking biceps. <laughs> Look, guys, I'm not saying necessarily that he has Sintol. I'm not convinced that he does have Sintol in his biceps. But there is definitely something weird going on. I mean, I know, I know, he always had great arms. That's what everybody keeps saying. But guys, anatomy, you know what biceps muscle is. It has two heads. Here's Ronnie Coleman, obviously he was younger here, but you can see his biceps, he had one of the most impressive biceps ever, and there was no reason for it to think, for anybody to think that he had any kind of oil in those biceps, they always looked dry, separated, and as you can see right here, there was a huge bicep split, you can see both heads separately, completely separately, and so you can get an idea what bodybuilders' biceps, overly developed, good-looking, dominant biceps, what they look like when they are actually separated, so if you check the anatomy chart, you will see where the short head is, where the long head is, you will see where these two heads are separated, and why am I telling you all this right now? I'm telling you this because William Bonex biceps don't have this normal looking shape. Take a look at his right bicep, the one that is behind. What is that bulge on the, on the upper portion of the bicep? Look again, pay attention, what is that? Is this the way bicep heads should be separated? I really don't think so, maybe it's something else, maybe William Bonac has some sort of alien genetics, maybe he doesn't have normal human anatomy, but these are not normal looking biceps, something is weird about this, look at his bulge, look at his ball on the upper portion of his outer head of his biceps, what is that, can somebody explain, what is that? I'm not hating on William or his physique, what he presents on stage is really impressive, you guys know that I think he deserved to win the Iron Classic this year, and you guys also probably know if you watch my channel that I think he's going to jump in his places this year at Mr. Olympia. I think maybe he's gonna even win the Mr. Olympia, I don't think this is gonna hurt him, but I'm just pointing something interesting. His biceps do not look normal, and I don't know what it is. If you guys have any idea, you can comment down below. Is it Sintol? Do you think it's oil or something completely else? But it's not just that bulge. Look at when he's rowing here the way his biceps are moving, and just how unnatural they look. I don't know what this is, it just doesn't look normal, it's something you don't see very often, if ever. Lee Priest, Rolly Winkler, Phil Heath, they all had incredible arms, but none of these guys had weird biceps like this. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. The next thing I wanted to talk about, and yes, I said thing on purpose, I didn't want to say the next person, the next bodybuilder, <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is Nick Walker, look at this freaking monster right here. I mentioned Lee Priest, Phil Heath and Rolly Winkler when I talked about the guys with the best arms, but I forgot to mention Nick Walker because he does have one of the best arms ever, and now that he's not working with Matt Jensen anymore, I'm just worried that Nick might grow his arms too much, to the point where they are gonna hurt his look? Does that even make sense? I don't know, I'm trying to think of a physique of a bodybuilder whose arms actually hurt him on stage. Can you guys think of anybody like that? Because off the top of my head I can't think of anybody like that, but you know Nick Walker has a really dominant arms, and if he keeps training them too much, they might make his chest look smaller, because Nick has problems with his chest, that's his weakest body part, and as you can see in this most recent physique update, his arms are looking enormous. And it looks to me that his arms grew in this offseason. Is that a good thing? Is that a positive thing? Well, in his case, maybe it's not, because again, his chest is weaker, and arms, when they are too big, they can make your chest look smaller. So while Nick was working with Matt Jansen, Matt Jansen was telling him not to train his arms. He had a little bit of bicep finisher after back, maybe some tricep finisher after chest or shoulders, but not a separate arm day. 
I'm not exactly sure what his approach to arm training is these days, but based on the videos that I saw and, uh, and also the physique updates, it seems to me that he's training his arms more often now. Of course, he knows that his arms are dominant body part of his and he doesn't really need to grow them too much. And I'm sure he's conservative as far as arm training, but to what point? Uh, I'm curious. Because I know Matt was holding him back with this. Is his new coach doing this as well? Or is Nick listening to him? Maybe his coach doesn't even have a say in Nick's training. There are coaches like that, like Chris Asito. He only does a guy's diets. And as you can see right here, Nick's arms are looking incredibly big, incredibly large. And maybe, maybe this is gonna hurt his look on stage. It's definitely not gonna hurt his look on Instagram or on top 5 best arms in the world YouTube videos. Right now from all the active bodybuilders, Nick definitely has the best arms in the world. But again, what I'm wondering is, is this gonna hurt his look on stage? I honestly hope he knows what he's doing, but whatever you guys think though about this, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.